Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. Check this out. Uh, beef shoulder clod, and I'm gonna smoke this big old piece of meat here. Um, before I do, what I wanna do is give you a close up of it. We're gonna kinda talk about what this uh, cut is. So hang tight. All right, so this thing is just shy of 23 pounds. Ugh, flip this over. Um, wonderful, wonderful piece of meat. Uh, one of the cool things about this is just the flavor. And like right in here are where the um, flat iron steaks are hidden or you know some parts of the uh, world they call them oyster steaks. There's London broil inside of this cut. There's um, shoulder steaks and shoulder roast. So a lot of flavor, a lot of really, really good beefy flavor. Um, but again, I'm going to be smoking this. Now, where, where I got turned on to this particular cut of meat, um, I live in the East County of San Diego, and there's two restaurants, very, very authentic barbecue restaurants. They've been here forever. Uh, one's, I know, has been here since the 40s. And um, this is what they cook. They don't do brisket. They do, the, they do uh, shoulder clod. And this is what they serve for their beef sandwiches and, uh, you know, their sliced beef plates. Uh, just a really good, good beefy flavor. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is just get this thing prepped and ready to, uh, to go. And as you can see, it's got a lot of fat on it. It's about a half inch thick of fat. And um, what I'm going to do is just trim some of this off just to get the fat layer down. Um, it's going to be a very long cook. I'm going to be preparing this, uh, treating it like a brisket basically. So, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to get away from, from a minimum of 20 hours of cooking. Um, so I want to make sure I keep some fat on here, you know, to, to render down, keep it tender. Um, <clears throat> right here, the point. It's, it's a lot thinner meat here, and um, it's pretty well marbled. This is going to pr pretty much disintegrate in my cook. Uh, because of that, a lot of the guys will actually cut this off. But um, it breaks down so much that it turns into basically like a pulled, pulled beef. And I think it just makes a killer sandwich, so I'm leaving it on there. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do it off camera just you don't need to see it really, is I'm just going to again uh, trim, the, trim some of the fat off and then I'm going to do an injection on this and the restaurants around here don't do an injection. Uh, their clods taste killer but I'm sure um, the main reason is just because they're smoking so many and I, um, this just gives it that extra kick and what I'm going to be injecting it with is um, just an au jus let me show you what I use. And I've told some of you guys about this. Um, Johnny's uh, French Dip Au Jus, and it's a concentrate. You mix this uh, two to one, it lasts a long time. What I don't use, I freeze. And uh, so I've got some of this uh, prepared, and I've added about a tablespoon and a half of bacon fat to that. Fill the syringe with that. It flows really easy in this thing, and I'm going to inject it, you know, one injection per, per inch on this uh, clod. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down the camera, get this thing injected, and then we'll start the next process, uh, which is going to be the rub. All right, so got the fat trimmed. I, I need to note, too, uh, compared to brisket fat, fat on this is really supple. Got it injected. Now I'm going to do is uh, put a rub on it. Um, I'm not making a rub on this, I, and I'll be honest with you, people with airplane flying over, I just don't feel like dealing with it. So uh, I went ahead and bought a, a prime rib rub. Um, this is Pappy's Choice prime rib rub. It had a lot of the ingredients that I would have put in a rub I would have made myself. And um, we're going for more of a savory rub. Um, it's got sugar, but the sugar's at the very last we see kosher salt, um, ground garlic, ground onion, pepper, paprika, cracked rosemary, and sugar is the very last uh, ingredient. Um, so, I'm going to get a good liberal rub on here. It looks really good. Alright guys, so the uh, rub is on, front and back, top and bottom, whatever you want to call it. 
Um, what I'm going to do now is put it in a three gallon uh, Ziploc bag. Those things are the best things since sliced bread in my opinion. I use them all the time. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on that I didn't talk about. Uh, again, I'm doing this low and so just like a brisket. Um, if you're going to prepare a whole clod like this, you, you need to cook it like a brisket. You're not going to be able to serve this, you know, medium rare or anything like a prime rib. Um, there's a lot of con connective tissues that when you're breaking this down for those cuts we talked about, you know, the um, flat irons and um, London broils, etc. Uh, all these connective tissues and the gristle, whatever, needs to be trimmed out. Uh, the way I'm cooking this, we're going to break all that down. So we're going to be able, when this is done, it's going to be just nice, soft, supple slices of, of really good tasting beef. Um, I bought this at a Smart and Final. I'm not really sure uh, how distributed Smart and Finals are throughout the country. A great store. It's like a mini Costco, but I've also seen these at Costco. Um, if you have a, a butcher that cuts his or her own meat, they should be able to get these for you because, again, this is something that they'll buy a cryovac and, and they'll break these down into these uh, various cuts. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this in the bag, throw it in the fridge. It's a Thursday right now, um, a little after 6 p.m. I'm going to start cooking this tomorrow, Friday uh, night, and we're going to be eating this for dinner on Saturday. So. Uh, I'll be seeing you when we get this thing out and get it ready for the pit. All right, guys, uh, Friday night. It's uh, about 5 p.m. and we are officially cooking. Well, once I close the lid, we'll be cooking. Um, I'm, again, this is a little under 23 pounds. I'm going to be running my pit at 225. Right now I've got a pecan on there and I will probably layer on a little bit of hickory as the cook uh, progresses here. Um, after four hours, I'm going to be uh, basting this with my au jus. Uh, now, as far as my target temperature, I, I, I said I'm cooking this how I'd cook a brisket, and I am, but this is a lot more forgiving than a brisket. Uh, I could pull this if I wanted to at 165. Uh, again, we're just trying to break down the uh, connective tissue, the cartilage, and uh, you know the grizzle, more or less, in, in this uh, cut. Um, but again, it's got a lot of tender meat already in it. I mean, there's flat irons in here for goodness sakes um, so it's going to be on the pit here for 20 to 24 hours and my target is going to be probably 170 to 180 but again if I wanted to 165 I could pull this bad boy we'll see you in a bit all right guys Ugh. it is four hours in it's time to mop Now this is uh, that au jus mixture with the, uh, it's got a little bit of pork fat in it. This is going to help us keep it nice and moist and juicy and uh, it's not going to hurt the flavor any either. And everything that drips off of here, once this lid's closed, you know, it's just going to keep that humidity in the pit, which is what I want. All right, um, well, about an hour, I'll take a peek at it. If it needs another mopping, I'll give it a mop. Check on it in a bit. All right, guys, just a quick update. Um, I am 10 hours into this cook, and I just flipped the uh, shoulder over and mopped the bottom. I'm gonna do this uh, for a few hours and then flip it back to the fat side up. All right, guys, time for a, uh, another check-in here. Um, flipped it back over to the fat cap up. Um, I left it fat cap down three hours and uh, just gave it another baste. All right, guys, we're coming up on 16 hours. Just wanted to give you a peek. There it is. Close the lid. I'll tell you what's going on right now. Um, we're at 150 degrees, and uh, sometimes you'll hit a wall at 150, and that's what I've done. Um, you don't panic when that happens. Uh, if you have foil or if you want to foil, this is when a good time to use it. It'll accelerate the cook time. I'm not. I, I'm, I'm mopping this thing like crazy every hour. So um, I'm just going to let it ride. And I'm sure that uh, come 20 hours uh, 
plus maybe we're going to be right at the perfect temp but it's looking really really moist and uh, so far i'm very happy with the this whole smoke all right guys another update um we're at hour 18. i just flipped this uh, piece of meat and mopped the bottom so it's fat capped down now um that 150 degree wall that i had mentioned on the last segment has been broken actually very shortly after i shot that segment it broke and it started to rise uh, gradually. Just to give you a little idea though, it took eight hours for me to reach 150. Once it reached 150, it rode that uh, temperature line for another eight hours before it broke. Um, we're at 162.4 now, and um, I'm very happy with the uh, progress. It's gonna, I think it's gonna be perfect timing for my dinner. Check out on it in a bit. All right, uh, guys, 22 and a half hours later, we are done. Um, hit my target temperature of uh, 180 degrees. So happy about that. What I'm going to do now is uh, go ahead and pull this and get it loosely wrapped in foil. We'll let it relax a little bit and then we'll uh, get this chopped up. And again, what I'm going to do is this is going to be pulled beef and then sliced beef. Now, um, you know, the, the cartilage veins that run through here, they didn't magically disappear. They're just really soft now. But as I'm slicing it, I'll be removing those, uh, those veins of, of cartilage. All the other things, the silver skin, um, any tendons or whatever, they're all, they're all dissolved. So anyway, uh, we'll see you in a bit. All right, guys, so we're gonna cut this bad boy up now. So as I was saying, a lot of guys will cut off this, um, this point here but it breaks down really well and I, I just think it makes a great um, pulled beef. So we're going to go ahead and cut that off now. I'm just going to cut off this fat. The trick is doing this without obscuring the camera. You can see, I mean, it's got the texture of a, of a Boston butt right now. Okay, now watch this. So, this is going to be the pulled beef. Put this in a separate bowl. And what I'm going to do is just pull this... Uh, and add a little teeny bit of hot sauce, or hot sauce, barbecue sauce. All right, now the rest of this we're gonna slice. And you can see I got a really great, great smoke ring there. And it's very tender, but there is a definite texture difference between this and that. Um, point. Just give you an idea texture when you compare this like to a brisket. I mean it's uh, like butter. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and finish the cutting this up. Basically we're going to be preparing this uh, so the our, one of our guests will have the option of making either a beef plate or a sandwich. Anyway thanks a lot for watching guys and we will see you on the next one.